Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Kathy Turner, and I want to welcome you to the Healthy Start Parent Overview. It's great that you're going to spend a little time with us this evening. I think by the time it's over, you're going to be so amazed to know what you hadn't known until now. And what we love is that once you know this, you can't unknow it. So if you have children, or if you have friends and family with children, and I'm talking mm -hmm. basically maybe two to preteen kids that you're looking at, and maybe you have just the slightest concern. What are you seeing? Why? Is that right? Is that normal? Should I be concerned? Who should I ask? Well, you're going to have a lot of those questions answered over the next hour, and they're going to be answered by a stellar doctor. I'm going to introduce her in a moment. You can see her on screen, screen but this is Dr. Stacy Ochoa, and she is going to be conducting the overview that's addressing parents. So if we were addressing the medical profession, other orthodontists, dentists, and doctors, it'll be a little bit different conversation. But for us tonight, it's me and you, moms and dads and grandparents, people who are looking at our own loved ones. And by the way, most of us who are involved with this company got involved because it did something for the people that we love and we're concerned about. Notice, uh, if you will, before I switch the page here, look at all of the associations. Dr. Ochoa, the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine, Academy of General Dentistry, American Academy of Psychological Medicine and Dentistry, Diplomat, American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. What we're looking at here is somebody who is highly credentialed, very experienced, and is going to tell you wonderful things about what could be in store for your children. And it's all stemming from what I'm holding. This is a little appliance. It's a removable oral appliance. These were invented by the world changer, Dr. Earl Bergerson, a board certified orthodontist, DDS, MSD, ABO. 50 years ago now, he founded Orthotain in 1967. He is the inventor of the entire Healthy Start treatment system for children and in many cases for adults. But our focus tonight is on kids. By the way, you might have some questions and I hope you're just kind of settled in with a cup of tea or a glass of wine, go ahead and jump online and ask your questions. We'll try and address them. If not, we can do that by email if you're sensitive about wanting to put that kind of information out publicly with the doctor. But we're going to handle all of it as it comes in. Now, let's get back to Dr. Bergerson. 25 years, he was a professor at Northwestern Dental School. There was a hall named after him, but the school is no longer, but he's going strong. He is going strong and he's still speaking all over the country. And he has done this all over the world for all these many years. In fact, now we have treated over 4 million children worldwide. And actually we're now in 47 countries. We are holding 514 patents on these appliances that are both domestic and international. Dr. Bergerson, he's delivered over 500 seminars, published 80 times, 80 peer-reviewed articles, and he holds 80 monographs. These appliances are FDA cleared, they're Health Canada certified, which means that they're the equivalent of a class two medical device. If this were planted inside the body, it would be fine. It would be safe. It's that grade of material. There are no BPAs. There is no silicone, no latex. The appliances and the little cases that they are coming in are antimicrobial. You see that we have the ISO certification, and of course, this is all American made. Now, let me tell you a little bit more. Let's dive in and see what Dr. Ochoa has done in her life to prepare her to take care of the children that she sees and their families. In, back in 2002, she was a graduate with distinction and many honors from the University of Missouri in Kansas City, the School of Dentistry, with her doctorate in dental surgery. Actively pursuing the latest research and technology, she works very closely with sleep physicians, ear, nose, and throat specialists in treating adults and children, all of this, again, talking about airway issues. The interest in dental sleep medicine and oral appliance therapy began, and listen, when her own father was diagnosed with severe OSA and prescribed CPAP therapy. Watching her father and her patients with OSA struggle with CPAP over the years, Dr. Ochoa was inspired to pursue oral appliance therapy and researched all the options available for this devastating condition. And now and then, she was excited to see that she can play a role in helping all of these patients. So back in 2010, Dr. Ochoa joined the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine and Apnea. And then in 2016, she, she just stayed so progressively involved in educating herself more and more on this path. But in 2016, she became board certified in dental sleep medicine with the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. 
She only uses oral appliances that have been FDA cleared for the treatment of snoring and OSA. With many options and appliances available for her patients, Dr. Ochoa customizes the appropriate appliance with each individual patient's needs in mind. In 2016, Dr. Ochoa received her diplomat status with the Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. Dr. Ochoa works closely with sleep physicians in St. Louis, treating her patients as a whole, understanding oral health in its overall role with our health. So adding pediatric airway health to her practice, she now is working with children to develop healthy airways through cranial facial development to make room for all the permanent teeth and address proper tongue posture, function, nasal breathing importance. Dr. Stacy Ochoa joins now a prestigious league of Healthy Start lecturing doctors to educate, to treat, and to change lives. I hope that you listen in because she can change lives in your family. Dr. Stacy Ochoa, so happy to have you. We've had so much fun talking offline about what you're doing, and I'm thrilled that the parents now get a little insight into what makes you tick and what you can share with them tonight. I'm talking to you right now more as, I mean, yes, I'm a practitioner. I'm a dentist, and um, I got into this mostly because of my family. So I'd like to just share my journey with this and why I'm so passionate about airway. This is not something that's traditionally taught in most dental or medical schools, and we get very little information, unfortunately, on sleep apnea. Maybe the average medical doctor and dentist, we get maybe an hour of dental sleep medicine or sleep medicine training. I'm not kidding when I say an hour. So when you get out, you decide what you're gonna pursue and um, what passions you wanna apply in your practice. So when my dad um, was diagnosed with sleep apnea and he really struggled wearing his CPAP and I knew oral appliances played a role, um, I just didn't realize how important of a role it played. And I, I watched the struggle. I watched how he couldn't wear it. I actually put his CPAP on one time to try to experience what that was. And it was like sticking my face out of a window going 100 miles an hour. And I looked at him after I took the mask off and I said, Dad, how, how can you do this? He said, I can't. And he said, I, I don't know what to do. So I started pursuing um, adult dental sleep medicine um, education and made him different oral devices over the years, appliances to help him um, stabilize his jaw and keep his airway open at night. And so then I began having my own kids and um, one by one noticing that, hmm, they're snoring. Uh, we've got some bedwetting going on. We've got mouth breathing. And uh, I did what was, uh, what I knew that based on research, you go and you get their tonsils and adenoids out and um, things were great for about six to eight months and then boom, it comes right back. Bedwetting is back, mouth breathing is back, crankiness is back, sweating in their sleep is back. Something's not right. I, I just knew that there was something else out there that um, we're missing and I really, for the last three years, I'm not kidding when I say I've been actively pursuing, um, passionately pursuing, and these kids on the screen, they're all a lot older. Actually, this is a year and a half ago, so the guy on your left, my son Ben, he towers me now. He's probably close to six foot, but you know, they're like, mom, you're obsessed with this. You know, you're gone every month. What are you doing? And um, I just needed answers and healthy start was on my journey and it made the most sense as a practitioner, but most importantly as a mom. And um, I began treating my children and developing them craniofacially, helping remodel their airways and get their tongue posture improved and nose breathing improving. Um, but I remember my dad saying to me, because my, my dad always called me sis. And he, he said, sis, why are you, you're going out of town all the time. You're just, you know, why don't you just chill out a little bit? You're, you know, leaving a lot. And I said, well, the kids have apnea, dad. And, and the medical community is basically, it's tonsils and adenoids coming out, which I've done, or it's CPAP therapy. And that's just a Band-Aid. 
and uh, they, they can't breathe through their nose very well. And I've done everything I can. And he said, well, I've never been able to breathe through my nose. And it just hit me, my gosh, if somebody could have got to my dad um, when he was a child, my dad would have had a completely different life than my dad had. And as much as I would want nothing more than my kids to grow up to be even a tenth of the man that my dad was, um, I would not want my children to grow up and have the health path my dad battled. And a lot of what my dad battled from sleep apnea, diabetes, heart disease, um, all the other metabolic syndrome issues, fatigue, anxiety, depression, pain, chronic pain, um, all stem from sleep apnea. So I wanted to start out with this picture of my family because without their patients, um, I wouldn't be able to have gotten the education I did. And honestly, my dad was my first teacher in airway. Um, he helped me help him. And then my kids came along and took me down another path with airway. And, uh, I just feel honored that I've got five teachers in my life now with the pediatric side of it. Cause there's not one of those kids on that screen that was breathing normal at all. And unfortunately, um, I lost my father a year ago. Um, and he did, my father did pass in his sleep and he did not have his device in his mouth. Um, it was actually on the bathroom sink that night. So, um, I mean, to say that I am, um, my practice, that airway is a piece of my practice is an understatement. I am uh, passionate about it because it is my story. And if you're tuning in, I think it's probably your story too. So I really hope in some way we can uh, educate the community together and all start working together to get our families healthier. This really is a silent crisis among children. Um, I was in bread company the other day talking about this with another mom and then a grandmother next to me asked if she could have my card. She said, you're describing my grandkids. I mean, it's everywhere. We have ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, difficulty in school, mouth breathing, snoring, restless sleep, delayed stunted growth, nightmares, asthma, chronic allergies, depression, dark circles under the eyes, swollen adenoids and tonsils, aggressive behavior, daytime drowsiness, allergies, frequently waking up at night, even sweating, a child that sweats in their sleep, that's not normal to sweat in your sleep. We have nine out of 10 kids that suffer from one or more of these symptoms. And research has shown us that a lot of these conditions have a common root cause, and that's sleep-disordered breathing. And so what options do parents have to help their children? We've got amphetamines, um, which is basically a stimulant, um, pres other prescription drugs, um, psychiatric testing, counseling, therapy, allergy testing, um, sleep studies, special education and tutoring, sleep aids, surgery. And I added in there CPAP therapy. That's one of the other options for children with sleep disordered breathing. And these only address the symptoms. None of this is addressing the root cause. These are all band-aids. They're very short term. Um, even though I really believe that a lot of the medical community feels that some of these might be curative, the research we're seeing is telling us otherwise. Um, tonsil and adenoid uh, removal is helpful and a piece of the puzzle, but it is not curative in the majority of the cases, especially with moderate or severe sleep apnea. Um, and then if they're on medications, there's a plethora of side effects, and then they're medicated for the side effects. Um, so a lot of these treatments can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and pretty much ineffective. So our healthcare sim system right now just doesn't have overall solutions, really, long-term solutions for this. So how does dentistry help? We know that Dentistry has tools that we can impact the development of a child's airway to increase oxygen intake. Um, because of this, um, it's more than teeth. 
it's more than cavities. And I get a lot of um, parents that come in. When I start talking airway, how's your child sleeping? Do they snore? They're looking at me like, why are you asking me these questions? I just want to know if they have cavities, right? Um, but the mouth is the beginning of the airway. And so we as dentists, as oral physicians, we see the tonsils and the tongue and the airways of these kids sometimes more than their own pediatricians. So it's really about their overall health and the well-being of every child. So we look at these pictures of these kids and really once you see what an unhealthy child looks like, you can't, like Kathy said earlier, you can't unsee this. And you are going to, next time you go to a restaurant, you're going to look around and you're going to say, holy cow, literally nine out of 10. They're right. That kid's sick. That kid's sick. So when you see the dark circles under the eyes, that's called in medical terms, venous pooling. Um, you see chapped, chronic chapped lips. Um, the mouth is open, the lips aren't sealed, they're mouth breathing. Um, another um, aspect of an unhealthy child, we can look at their profile and we can see that the face is not growing in the right direction. Um, I like to do a little trick, I show parents if you draw a line from the forehead, if you're looking at the profile, you draw a line from the most prominent part of the forehead just straight down, you want to see the child's lower face growing on that line or ahead of it, ideally. And you can see in the profiles of these two kiddos that when you draw a line down their forehead, pretty much the rest of their face is behind that line. They're growing in the opposite direction. So, what are we, what is happening with all of this, with sleep disorder breathing and sleep deprivation in children? Why are we seeing this rise in this epidemic? Um, we have a greater awareness of severe effects on the children's health. Mouth breathing um, allows for the mandible um, basically to be displaced in the mouth. When the mouth is open, the tongue is not the roof of the mouth and everything is falling back. And this is reducing the airway of the child. Um, habits like finger sucking, abnormal tongue posture, and swallowing causes the upper arch to constrict. And the palate, which is the base of the nose, um, it basically is being pinched up into the base of the nose. And now we have an increase in nasal resistance and an, a decrease in nasal breathing. We see a reduction in REM sleep, which is a very important cycle in sleep. Um, and it is affecting the brain function and growth hormone production, endocrine, um, all the hormones that go along with that, and the immune system is affected. Growth hormone is released in sleep, in stage three sleep. If a child is not getting stage three sleep, they don't get to get the growth hormone that they need. That's why some of these kiddos are smaller than they um, should be for their age. And that's why when they start breathing, you're going to see a sudden growth spurt in these kids. They need a whole new wardrobe because their pants don't fit anymore. Um, this causes multiple behavioral, social, and body health system, symptoms as well. Here's an example of what normal growth is. Cranial means basically the head, the skull, facial. So craniofacial, how the head and the face should be growing from ages 2 to 17. So what a lot of people don't realize, by two years old, your child has already developed about 55% um, of the size of their head and face. They're like halfway done growing with their skull. Um, they don't have a whole lot longer to go before they're fully um, done growing with, their, with the face and the skull. Four years old, the children are about 75% done. Uh, 12 years old, most girls are pretty much close to being done. Boys are at about 89, 90%. But this is why we have to act. We have a window of time, um, not only for craniofacial growth, but logically speaking, we have a very small window of time to work with where that child is finished wing and we can optimize and give their brain all that oxygen that it needs to develop. So normal growth and development of the face is forward and downward. So why are so many of today's kids not experiencing normal growth and development? Um, so there have been studies, um, and you can look this up. It's, it's very interesting how when you look over the last few generations, we're seeing more and more kids developing 
malocclusions or crowded teeth. And when you go back a few generations, you didn't see as many people needing orthodontics. You didn't see as much asthma. You didn't see as much ADD, ADHD. And a lot of this is dietary consistency and toughness. So if you use the example of say a child is, or a person is sitting in a wheelchair and they're not using their legs, the muscles will literally atrophy. They get really small. Um, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that is what's happening with faces of children today. And I, as a mom, am guilty of this myself. I, I just did what, what I was told. I, I made sure that everything was super mushy for my kids because I didn't want them to choke. So um, I pureed everything and gave them really processed foods and um, processed, you know, out of a bottle or out of a box, um, out of a container, because I was so afraid that they were going to cough or choke or not be able to swallow it. These soft diets are causing our children's faces to not develop properly. It is definitely one of the things that's causing this. Um, if you go back a few generations, moms would nurse their babies and then wean off the breast. And then whatever mom and dad ate when junior was hungry, that's what, that's what little Johnny ate is whatever mom and dad were eating. They didn't puree everything and buy Gerber baby food. So there's definitely an increase in that because we have underdeveloped upper and lower jaws, a drastic increase in malocclusions. Now we're looking at 80 to 90% of children have no room for their teeth. Um, the teeth are telling us a story. The teeth are saying, I don't have enough room. Teeth know where to go if there's enough bone. So uh, this study also looked at the Western culture, which is very processed, soft diet. Um, and they looked when they went into cultures where they ate more, um, you know, the kids ate what the parents ate, they ate meat off the bone, they chewed, they used the muscles and the bones were stimulated to grow and develop. When they introduced the Western diet, the first generation, 50%, just in one generation, 50% developed malocclusions. In the second generation, 70% developed malocclusion. Third generation, 85%. Look where we are in the United States. How many generations removed are we from that ideal diet of, you know, fruits, vegetables, chewing your food, using the muscles and, and building the development of your, of your skull and your face. And someone told me the other day, it was really funny. It was actually in my practice. Somebody said, you know, I just go by the rule that if my great grandma looked at what I was getting ready to eat and she didn't identify that as food, I probably shouldn't eat it. And that's really a lot of what we do. We eat out of boxes. You know, our great, great grandparents would have been very um, probably upset with what we're putting in our bodies these days. So the other potential problems that are occurring that develop craniofacial development in children is prolonged bottle feeding with nipples as well as, um, uh, pacifier use. So you'll see children with walking around with these binkies or pacifiers and anything that's putting a distance between the tongue and the palate is a problem. It's not allowing the palate to develop. It's not allowing the base of the nose or the face to develop properly. The tongue is one of the strongest muscles in the body and it drives the development of the palate and the face in that forward downward movement. So here's a little example, and I, look, I gave my kids these myself, um, the graduate puffs that melt in their mouth. Uh, what's interesting is they have done studies too, because we, we do this as moms and dads because we're afraid our children are going to choke. But what they have found is by what we're doing with the bottle feeding, which is developing dysfunctional swallows, and what we're doing with these softer diets is our children are not developing good muscle tone with their tongues and all the muscles that allow us to swallow. So when they go into cultures where children are literally like gumming hard vegetables and chewing meat off the bone and they have no teeth, but they're able to somehow masticate and get that food in them, they have much, lo much lower choke rates than we do in the United States. And what it is is they've developed very strong um, swallowing reflexes. They have very protective swallowing reflexes, unlike more of the Western kiddos. So 
how we're protecting them from choking by giving them soft foods is actually kind of making the choke reflex worse. So here's an example of an ideal five-year-old. And quite frankly, I'd like even just a little bit more spacing between these teeth, but you want at least six millimeters of spacing between baby teeth. And if you think about it, the permanent teeth are so much bigger than those baby teeth. If you see a child with perfectly straight, uh, close together baby teeth, everybody thinks that's just a beautiful little smile. I see that and I'm like, oh boy, we need to act now because they're going to need orthodontics. But more, what I'm more concerned with is, oh boy, the bone is so constricted, your child doesn't even have spacing between their baby teeth. What is going on with their airway? If the bone is constricted, what does that airway look like above the palate and behind? So this is an airway. Um, and basically, if you look behind the nose, that greenish area, that's something we call the nasopharynx. Behind the hard palate and some of the tongue area, we call that oropharynx. And then the base of the tongue, we call it the laryngopharynx. So that's, that's the airway we're looking at. It should be a nice big funnel shape. And then when we talk about the palate, that's also part of the maxilla. It is the upper jaw of the body. And then you've got the mandible, which is the lower jaw of, of the skull. Um, we know that research, Dr. Christian Guimineau, who's done lots of research, and let me give you a background on who Dr. Christian Guimineau is. He is a sleep physician. And he actually discovered obstructive sleep apnea. So he's kind of the father of, of OSA. He figured out what it was when people stopped breathing um, based on obstructions. But he has said, our results suggest that dental arch expansion improves sleep disordered breathing in patients with upper and lower jaw constriction and can be a valid treatment. Um, he is actually gonna be with the American Dental Association this August. Um, to start promoting integration between the dental community and the medical community. And he is really imploring um, the dental community to become more involved, to understand the important role between craniofacial development and the airway um, for these kiddos. So here's an example. Remember the airway I showed you just a few minutes ago it should be a, a pretty good funnel when you're looking um, from the side. This is something called a CEF radiograph, and you can see on the kid on the left, they're 10 years old, you can see this nice dark funnel from the back of the nose all the way down the throat. That's the airway, that's what the child's breathing through. You can also see that face is developing forward as well. Look at the kid on the right, 10 year old child. The face is not growing down and forward, it's growing back. And as that face is growing in the wrong direction, it's impeding on that airway. And that child now has very little airway to breathe through. So here's a uh, profile um, in real life. And you can see the drastic difference. The child on the left, if I drew a line from their forehead straight down, you would see that their teeth are on or ahead of that line their face is growing forward, that airway is growing open. The child on the right, the face is growing back and down, impeding that airway. So I'm sure a lot of you see this on Facebook, but it, it drives me crazy knowing what I know about airway, but I'll see parents post kids, pictures of their kids or videos. Oh look, you know, little Johnny had a really long day and he's the mouth's hanging open and they're sitting in the car seat in the back and they're videotaping them snoring. And a lot of people, unfortunately, just think that's a, a sign of, boy, they're really sleeping hard. There is nothing normal about snoring, nothing. Um, if your child was awake and sitting next to you and making a choking sound, you would rush them to the emergency room. It's no different when they're sleeping. The airway should be quiet and, and there should, it should be effortless. When you hear someone struggling to breathe and you hear that choking sound, it's super unhealthy, super unhealthy, and it's causing neurocognitive changes. So we got this little girl mouth breathing, and what we know is that mouth breathing while sleeping does not improve in 82% 
of kids between the ages of two and 12 years old. I mean, that's the majority of kids that mouth breathe. It's not just gonna magically go away. Their lips aren't sealed. They have low muscle tone. These kiddos have low tongue posture. They're breathing cold, dirty, dry air, and it's extremely toxic, quite frankly. Here's a video I'm gonna show you of a mom who did record her child, but she understands that it's not normal that her child is choking on, on its little tongue. Getting anything in. Listen to this mother describe her baby's sleep disorder breathing. Yes, there you go. Now watch what happens when she's able to open the airway by simply shifting the position of his jaw. Now watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. If I can, let's see if I can. And I open his airway. Just bring his airway forward. Now listen to the quiet breathing. There we go. Now he's breathing through his nose. So now he's breathing through his nose. So what does your child's airway look like? I actually have this demonstration in my, in my office um, where I have different straw sizes. And on the left, we have a coffee straw. And I'll sometimes even have a parent put the coffee straw in their mouth and just say, why don't you breathe through that for about five minutes and see how you feel. Some children literally have the size of a coffee straw. Awake, that's what they're breathing with. And when they fall asleep, they're struggling all night long. What I would like to see, I tell parents, is we want not a coffee straw, not a soda straw. I want more of a smoothie straw or a garden hose. That's what we want. Um, the bigger the airway, the better. Um, we talked about bottle feeding, pacifier use, poor tongue posture, and things like that. Um, anything that causes poor tongue position or an abnormal swallowing, some of these um, bottles with the nipples, I mean, these kids are literally, they're not drawing the milk out like we were designed to do. They're literally forcing their tongue forward because the milk is dribbling out of the bottle. And so the child is developing a reverse swallow because they're literally trying to push the milk out so they don't choke on it. All these things, from the time we're infants, um, soft diets, poor oral, oral habits, poor tongue position, abnormal swallowing, all these things then cause underdeveloped dental jaws and arches. And now we've got these compromised airways everywhere. Um, it, I, I rarely see a child in my practice that has beautiful spacing between their baby teeth and they sleep like a rock star. And when I see them, I like grab all the team and I say, check this kid out. And we just make them feel like a rock star because they're like, like the unicorn. They just, they're so rare. So with the compromised airway, we see mouth breathing, we see snoring, swollen adenoids and tonsils, low tongue position or tongue thrusting when they swallow, underdeveloped dental arches, over jets, over bite, open bites. That's the relationship between the mandible and the maxilla and cross bites. That's when the uh, maxilla is too constricted and the lower arch has to shift one way or the other. Then we see restless sleep, arousals, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic allergies, drowsiness, um, anger, defiance, difficulty in school. Um, these things cause are caused from sleep disorder breathing. They really, really are. Um, and when, when you think about it as an adult, when you don't have a good night's sleep, you're cranky, you're, you're not focused, you aren't your best self, um, you don't feel good, you're achy, you're tired, um, and you got to go get that giant cup of Starbucks or something in the morning to stimulate you to keep you focused. Um, so what can a dentist possibly do about this epidemic with sleep disorder breathing? Here's the difference. This is why I'm super excited. I've always loved dentistry. I've always wanted to be a dentist since I was like four years old. It's kind of crazy, but um, we can actually fix it. So we aren't a band-aid. We're actually 
developing a child's oropharynx. We're actually developing their face. We're helping that child be their best self. This isn't a Band-Aid. Um, this is a solution. And even when I was treating adults and still treat adults for sleep apnea with oral appliances, I'm not curing their apnea. I'm managing their apnea. Um, it is not, it is a Band-Aid. I'm keeping them alive during this, their sleep. I'm helping them have a better quality of life, but I'm not really fixing it. In a child, if I'm working with their growth and development, I'm fixing it. And this is where I've added Healthy Start as one of the tools in my office, um, in my tool belt for sleep disorder breathing with children. Um, and again, like Kathy said in the beginning, I believe now they're at 4 million cases worldwide, um, FDA approved, which I will only work with FDA approved products. Look at all the countries they're in. They're helping kids all over the world. Um, and again, things always happen. They seem to happen more on the coast first and then they move into the Midwest. So I do see this happening more. East Coast, West Coast have been doing this for a while. So I'm really hoping that we can start getting this in the, the Midwest and being more integrative here. But I was very excited to bring this to my children and then to my practice as well. And this is what Healthy Start can do. So it can naturally help expand the dental arches by getting that child's tongue up. Again, the tongue is the expander. The tongue is the best or the worst orthodontist. If the tongue is out of control and it's in the wrong spot, it's all gonna unravel. If the tongue is in the right spot, everything develops as it was designed to. Um, established nasal breathing, we discourage and eliminate mouth breathing. Nasal breathing prepares um, the air for the body. This is something I'm trying to get people to understand and I'll ask kiddos that they they don't know anything but mouth breathing. So I'll say, should you breathe through your nose or your mouth? And they look at me like, what are you talking about, lady? i breathing, I guess, my mouth. That's what I breathe through. And I, I say, okay, well, what is your nose for? And they really have no idea. It's like a decoration on their face. They don't know what their nose is for. And then I'll say, okay, if I hand you an ice cream cone, where would you put that? Up your nose or in your mouth? And they laugh. Well, I put it in my mouth. Well, absolutely, because your mouth is for eating. You've got your tongue in there. You've got your teeth in there. Your nose is for breathing. So the nose actually filters the air. It warms the air. It humidifies the air. And there is a chemical in our paranasal sinuses called nitric oxide. It literally zaps bacteria and viruses. It opens up all the tubes of the body. It opens everything up. When you breathe through your mouth, you have absolutely zero exposure of that air to nitric oxide. So now you're getting cold, dirty, dry air into the lungs, which can cause inflammation, um, as well as it can cause the tonsils to be inflamed and enlarged as well. So with Healthy Start, we can get that nose turned on because some kids it's been off for their whole life. We train the tongue, we strengthen and condition it, reposition it up where it belongs so it can drive the development of the face. We eliminate bad habits, thumb sucking, tongue thrust, reverse swallows, and we eliminate open bites. We also can advance the mandible to correct an overjet. An overjet is when the lower jaw is way far back and the maxilla is ahead of it. We want them to be aligned with each other. We increase the airway size and we can correct most of the symptoms of sleep deprivation. Um, we, it encourages proper facial uh, development. It corrects most orthodontic diagnosis to a class one. Um, proper intercuspation of the teeth. We want all 28 teeth in before the age of 12. And that's a key too is I'm very much anti-extraction. These teeth we were designed to have. Our faces were meant to have all those teeth. I do not like taking out permanent teeth. Um, that should be something that's so extremely, extremely, extremely rare. And then we also reduce uh, future relapse, orthodontic relapse, or even orthodontic treatment down the road because we're actually guiding the teeth into place. So here's a little guy. His name's Michael. On the left, he's nine. And on the right, he's 14 after healthy start. You can see how if you draw a line from his forehead straight down, the majority of his maxilla and his mandible were way behind that line and growing in the wrong direction. So you can only imagine what that airway looks like. On the right, 
again, the face is more forward, the jaws forward. Look at his jaw. He actually has a jawline. Uh, before everything was pushed back and you couldn't see the shape of that jaw. So you can see his airway on the left with everything, everything growing back. And then on the right where he's coming more forward, it's definitely a more improved airway, that big funnel we like to see. And then there's Michael at um, age 14. Uh, no brackets, no wires. You know, I'm a dentist. You'd think, oh, I'm just a big fan of braces. I'm not. If a child needs it, so be it. Sometimes you need a little tweaking maybe here and there at the end, or if a child just won't cooperate, then their only option is braces, right? But I'm not a big fan of braces because all we're doing is moving the white things around. We're not addressing the issue of what the child behind the white things, the wellness, the health of the child behind the teeth. But just look at the difference of his overbite and his overjet. It's amazing. I mean, if my kid looked like that on the right, I would be just ecstatic. So he looks a lot healthier. He's got a big, beautiful, broad smile. No orthodontics. Just getting the tongue where it needs to be. Like I said earlier, your tongue is either the best or the worst orthodontist. It just depends if it's in the right spot. So 12 months and healthy start. I mean, it works so fast. It's faster than braces, four to five times faster than braces. It's, it's crazy how fast these teeth will move when given the, pro the proper environment. So sleep disorder, breathing, and ADD. What is this connection? We hear ADD, ADHD, that's with the hyperactive aspect to it. This is an epidemic. We're seeing this everywhere. Kids are fidgeting, they can't focus. Uh, we've got, I, I talked to a pediatrician not too long ago. They said they had two giant file cabinets full of children because they have to document when they give these children stimulants for ADD diagnosis, which really the ADD diagnosis is, it's a checklist. There's not like an actual test. There's some questions that they ask and then, okay, your child has ADD. Um, and then right now they put them on a stimulant. And the question is, is why is a child that's already fidgeting and hyperactive better when we put them on a stimulant? And it's because they're tired. Um, they're exhausted. So for them, they're stimulating themselves as to not fall asleep, talking to everybody, moving their pencils around. And this is what we adults do. We tap our pencils, we tap our foot, we try to stay awake in a meeting, and we get that cup of coffee. Oh, thank goodness, now we have a chemical stimulant, so now we can just sit back and focus. So what's interesting is Dr. Karen Bonnick did a study um, this was on 11,000 kids over six years, and this was um, published in peer-reviewed journal called Pediatrics in 2012. And what they found in the study was sleep disorder breathing increases the risk of ADD, ADHD by at least 50%. I have also um, gone to several lectures by Dr. Stephen Sheldon, who is a pediatric sleep physician at Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. He will even say he believes 85 plus percent of ADD, ADHD is just really a side effect of a sleepy child. It's sleep deprivation, usually sleep deprivation. So if we can get, I'm trying to get more practitioners to start asking the sleep questions before we get out that prescription pad and start writing prescriptions for stimulants to our children. I've seen moms buying Red Bull in the grocery store because, oh man, if my child has Red Bull, they're just so much better at school. Why does your child need Red Bull? Let's talk about your child's sleep. Are they getting enough sleep? And even if they're getting a, enough hours of sleep, are they getting quality sleep within those hours? Sleep disorder, breathing, and bedwetting connection. Um, this is something that hits home in our house. This is definitely something that has been struggled with and it's really um it's very upsetting for the child for the whole family because they're embarrassed by it they don't go stay the night at friends houses um they don't socialize as much because they don't want to be asked to spend the night because that's awkward they don't know how to get out of it um we know that reduced oxygen is probably interfering with the deep REM sleep which affects neurological and hormonal symptoms probably interfering with bladder control 
something else at some lectures that I've attended is the question is with the mouth breathing. Basically, when you breathe through the wrong hole, you know, you're supposed to be breathing through a nostril, which is much smaller. So when you breathe through your mouth, you're dumping off too much carbon dioxide and the, bo the body becomes too acidic. So in an effort to handle that pH, um, the body will actually eliminate and wet on itself to kind of get the pH under control too. So if you get that mouth breathing under control, the bed wetting goes away. So here's some case studies, healthy start. You've got the girl um, on the left, five years old, and look at her at seven. Her growth is completely changed. I'll just tell you right now, if you don't help that five-year-old girl, she does not naturally become the girl on the right. That is, not nat that is just not growth, that is intervention. That five-year-old girl with her jaw far back like that does not automatically become that seven-year-old girl. Sometimes people will say, well, aren't, didn't they, she just naturally grow like that? Not at all. Um, if you don't intervene with poor growth, it just becomes exacerbated poor growth. But look at her at 12 years old. I mean, she looks amazing. This, she's done. She's breathing well, her tongue's up. She's done. She looks great. And this guy, 12 years old, 14 years old. Big difference between two years. Big difference. I really like this case too. Eight years old on the left, 14 on the right. But look at look on the right of the screen at eight years old, deep, deep overbite. You can't even see his lower teeth. That lower jaw is so shoved back in his airway and it's so over collapsed. And just a year later, with his habit corrector and the Healthy Start system, look what his body did for itself. The body knows how to heal itself. We just have to give it the tools to heal itself. Sometimes we think we gotta get in there and crank on things and wires and brakes and all these things, and it's no, 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 no. Give the body oxygen, let the body breathe, and watch what it does. So Healthy Start, it changes lives, and um, that's why I'm excited to bring it to the community because, you know, straight teeth, that's wonderful. But I'm more concerned with why the teeth are crowded in the first place. And the teeth being straight are just a side effect. It's a nice icing on the cake to a healthy child. And that's why I'm excited to have this in my practice and use it on my own children. Um, they have, again, treated more than, well, now it's 4 million, but I just like how everything is BPA, silicone, latex, latex-free, pain-free, non-invasive, non-surgical, non-pharmaceutical. It's safe. It's effective. It's conservative. What on earth kind of medical treatment has that? Um, Everything's either surgical or pharmaceutical these days. And I like that this is a very holistic approach to treating a child's growth and development and airway health so they can be the best child they were meant to be, the best person that they were designed to be. I often give this um, sleep and speech questionnaire to all the parents that come to the office. If you uh, give us a call, um, we'll be happy to email this to you if you want to take this um, and apply it to any of your kids and just make sure that their sleep is um, healthy and that the speech is appropriate for their age. Um, we would love, 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 love to take care of your kids and see your kids. And I cannot um, not address this. I always want to dedicate anything I do regarding airway dedicate it to my dad and uh it's very emotional for me because he's my hero in so many ways and if it wasn't for my dad my first teacher in so many ways i wouldn't have gone on this journey 15 years ago and uh again like i said i would love for my children to grow up to be just even half the man my dad was, but I really don't want them to deal with the health issues my father did. Um, so I dedicate this to my dad, and I really know my dad would be very happy that I'm bringing this to the community, and I really wish that he could have had this treatment 
or something like this when he was a kid as well. Um, I'd love to see you and your kiddos. If you are curious, if you're concerned, we do have Healthy Start Tuesdays at our office and we do free screenings on kiddos. We can look at their airway and just give you a questionnaire and discuss if we feel maybe Healthy Start um, would be something good for you and your child. Um, and then we can get you going in the right direction. Um, so again, give us a call, check out our website. We'd love to have you. And I just really appreciate you, Kathy and Susie, for having me tonight. Um, this is very, very, very passionate part of my life. And I'm just so glad that there's a platform here that I can talk to other parents and just sit down and have a nice cup of coffee and, um, and, and talk. Yeah. Just as parents, this is a crisis, and, and I really I went to another course. Um, it was the Canadian pediatric sleep physician, and she said, um, you do not hear this word often, but I'm going to say it. We have an epidemic, and I don't use the E word very often, but I'm going to. This is one of the sickest generations that has existed on planet Earth, and the dentist and the ENTs can work together to truly find a cure for this. Kathy, Kathy, you're, you need, if you can unmute, that'd be yeah, great. Thank you, sorry. Yes, and it's the pediatrician and it's every caregiver and educator that needs to know where to direct that family to get this help. Absolutely. Of the right type of provider. And what astounds me is that when you say the E word epidemic, my first impression was, I hate it when they try and use a scare tactic. I, I, I just am turned off by that. Right. The more I understood, right. the more I thought, not only is it an epidemic, why aren't we screaming from the rooftops? Why is it? This is only one hour in dental school. But at the end of the day, at least one hour with you tonight, Dr. Ochoa, no parent has ever not Seen this has not connected the logic it's evidence-based you show the before the after it's clear there is a cause and an effect and this magical little thing that you can put in the mouth for everything that's gone wrong if you catch it early enough you can reorganize everything in the mouth and, and it's, it's magical yeah it really it's that simple and sometimes we think as parents could it be that simple I mean could all these health problems really be from lack of sleep and from, I mean, sleep being my, one of my specialties, it, I mean, if you live to be 90 years old, you should have slept at least 30 years of your life. It's that important. Sleep is a third of our lives. So we were supposed to have this sleep for a reason. And if you're not getting it, you're just going to be a train wreck. And, and we have to have healthy sleep. It's one of the pillars of health. And it, it all just spins out of control from there. Well, every adult knows what it's like to go through the different kind of pain of sleep deprivation and how you just push yourself through and how it affects and impacts every aspect of your life, your relationships, yeah. your performance, your health and your happiness and your vision of anything. So this is, uh, it, this is a solution. It is amazingly direct, simple cause and effect. And so I'm glad that you do this on Tuesdays. I'm um, obviously we generally look at our children and we respond. The fact that you can look back at your parents and have this three generations of your life experience that brought you to this level of education to help people. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri is in, is the name of your town, is it Imperial? Is that where you are? It's Imperial. Yeah, we're right outside of St. Louis, like literally 10 minutes outside. We're like a suburb of St. Louis. Well, that town is in good shape because you planted your flag for Healthy Start. <laughs> so we have a I hope everybody shares this video because it's on Facebook that they can share it with other parents. And, and you want the go-to moms because they're the ones that everybody else looks at and say, what did you do? What did you learn? What do you know? That go-to mom is the one that will, will know. Go to Amen to that. Amen to that. Yes, indeed. Susie, did we have any questions come up? No questions other than um, just a one, just a, a comment about what a wonderful job, um, what a wonderful story, um, Dr. Ochoa. So I, I thank you so much. It, it, just absolutely thank fantastic. You. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.
Well, we'll have you back. It's wonderful to have you in our stellar list and lineup of outstanding stellar doctors that represent our company here and abroad and on Facebook and on television and on radio and on any platform we can find to tell this story. And hopefully people can pass it along with the digital age of communication. Let's go, moms and dads. If you're watching, pass this on. Don't let somebody else be left behind. So with that, Dr. Ochoa, thank you so much, Stacey, for, for being with us, telling the story in such a frank mom manner that everybody can understand. Even when you did use a lot of medical, dental, technical terms, it was still very, very clear to us. And of course, thank you, Susie, for, for uh, running the show, the technical engineer behind the scenes and catching mm -hmm. any little mistake, like, you're muted. And... <laughs> muted i should i should have a mute button in life but anyway <laughs> for healthy start and orthotain company for all the moms and dads who joined us tonight we say thank you and good evening thank you